The DX is not the D in Ted or the X in Ted. It is designed, sealed with a loving kiss. If you cut me in half, you would see the words design, design, design everywhere. Um, my husband says, that's all I talk about. Actually, I want to take this seriously um, and reflect on my 25 years working in design and designing things and uh, undertaking design research and look at the future of cities and why we need to think about using design to design cities of the future. First of all, I want you to use your imagination. I want you to think about future cities. Can you imagine an open, interactive city? What does it look like? How do we behave in it? What are the pluses and minuses? How will you live in that city? Does it look like this? Does the city talk to you? Does it tell you how much carbon you're using, how much carbon it's using? Does it tell you about its heritage? Does it tell you about its systems? Is the bus coming on time? Does it look like this? What is the innovative services that are going to be there? Will the high street tailor return to make up that digitally downloaded suit that you've got off the internet? Does the local fab lab print you a new dish that you broke last week? Are you developing your own community newspaper? Are you using the digital public space? Does it look like this? Well, I hope not, because this one was the design of a city, the vision of a city in 1924 for the city of 1950. I'm not sure how far we've got, and maybe we are there. Sometimes it feels like this when you're on the underground in London. That's why it's very important to think about cities. We need to apply design and indeed imagination to how we're going to live in the cities of the future, in the low carbon cities that we need to live in. And the reason is that more people live in cities than ever before. Over half the global population live in a city. And indeed, in, 90, in 2050, we will have 6.4 billion people living in cities, double that, that is today. So how can we ensure these cities are livable? How do they sustain human well-being without destroying the planet? These are rather large, challenging questions that most people in most universities are thinking about at the moment. Why is D so important? Well, it's important because we need to think about how we can design the way in which we live our lives and how we can develop use design to improve our quality of life in those places. Let me give you some examples here. Designers design places, products and messages. Often, they tend to be negative. They enc encourage us to consume. They encourage us to drink alcohol, uh, eat more, um, get stressed at work and sleep very little, which actually encourages us and helps us and leads us towards disease. Now, non-communicable diseases, which these are, cancer, heart disease, um, uh, depression, are the biggest burden on healthcare systems in the world and growing. Now, designers do, in fact, do what I call positive design or tend to be reactive design. They design the solutions to help us improve our quality of life. So we've got that sort of model of the system in which design operates. But why do we need to, to develop reactive design? Why don't we think about design in a much more socially responsible way at the onset? Why don't we think about better ways of doing things before we create the problems? So let's take a place like this. We know that, and the evidence suggests, that design 
Designers need to create green spaces in cities. People in cities need green space. Adults need places to walk, to congregate, respite from the built environment. Um, children need places to play, they need fresh air. Do these places look like this? Are these the best places? Usually not because they encourage a fear of crime, even if there isn't crime there. They are not very attractive. They don't encourage people to walk, to play, to congregate. We did some work with the Design Council, taking theory from criminology and the principles of design to think about how you design better parks. This is Hume Park in Manchester that was previously a deserted, derelict area with low quality housing around it. We, we use this as an example to show how theories in criminology help develop this park. For instance, lines of sight, eyes on the street. It's, it's known that if you have eyes on the space in the street, you get less crime. This park had sight lines all the way through it. The playground was opposite the school, so that the school overlooked constantly the, 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 the playground for children. The spaces also were permeable to allow an inclusive nature of the, of, of the park. However, there were barriers and there were designs of the, if you can see there, the design of the, of the sloping fence was to prevent teenagers hanging out in places that would disturb the residents, but providing other spaces for the teenagers to, to hang out and feel they weren't being overlooked um, and they had some privacy. So we use that as an example of how you can bring design alongside other disciplines to think about um, improving the quality of life and well-being in, in the space. Another question we might think about is how we use design that, to design cities that don't destroy those spaces, that don't consume all the materials and all, and all the aspects of, of, of the planet. We need to think about density. The current research and solutions suggest that we need more compact cities. We don't need cities to spread around like Los Angeles, like some of the greater US cities that actually consume more carbon than, than anywhere else. But what is a dense city? How do we design one? Does it look like this? Does it look like this? Does it look like this? Do you want to live in a place like this? Some people obviously do. But how do we create a better place? And what's the relationship to creating compact cities, denser cities, with transport? How do we deal with the transport systems? How do we deal with the, the growth in the population, the density of people? What about the density of garbage, the density of rubbish? How do we create systems to reduce that rubbish, remove it, reuse it? I've been doing some work trying to understand the relationship between density of buildings and density of places and density of people, density of mobile phones, of noise. Nobody previously has done work on this to look at this relationship. If we don't understand that, how can we design better places? No good just designing places that, that fit more people. We need to understand Fitting more people in, fitting more buildings in, mean what does that mean to the flora and fauna? How can we get more trees into that space? How can what will happen to the commodities and, and the products that we have in that space? So, why is design so important today? Designers have a way of thinking and making and doing that is holistic. They actually think about people and places and their experiences. They study how we, we work, how we play. They use ethnography. Egnof egnof uh, ethnography. They, they think about everybody in terms of what they're doing. Older people, younger people, disabled people. They use user-centered design to think about the stakeholders in whatever they're designing. But they also explore the space, explore new technologies. They draw in knowledge about new materials and new techniques. 
Then they use divergent thinking. They actually dream. They use their imagination. They challenge the problem space. They come up with alternatives. And designing is playing. We play, we experiment, we use materials. We come up with lots and lots of concepts. It's rather like being a child, and you have to go back to being a child. Children draw their imagination, and they make marks, and they don't worry about it. Designers tend to do that. They make marks, and they use those marks to inspire them to the next idea. However, designers do something else. They then use convergent thinking. They test their ideas and their drawings to come up with the solution or a number of solutions that will work. They, they prototype and they test these out with, with the users and consumers. So we all know designers do this. Design is very familiar. It's around us. We, everything we have that's around us is designed. We design knives and forks. We design newspapers. We design the building we're sitting in. In fact, the brief for this building was an iconic retail space with movable everything, so you can test that out as you're leaving. We design places after bombs occurred, and we visualize Canberra. So why is design so important today? There have always been challenges, economic, social, environmental. What's so important now? Time, speed, and communication. An idea today, created and written down in London, can travel the globe in 24 hours. It can be adopted, used, abused, without the knowledge of the creator. But we need to adopt and adapt that process by bringing the knowledge of the crowd, of the engineers, of the scientists, of the social scientists, together to think about the complexity of the city and how we actually redesign it together. Because no one siloed solution will work. Environmental scientists haven't got the answer. Social scientists haven't got the answer. We need to bring them together. We need to bring them and communities together to think about, to imagine alternative, radical futures. We need the experience of the crowd with the experience of the designer and the professional to actually radically come up with different solutions, implement those solutions, test them with the crowd, rethink them, and develop new visions of the future. So for me, everyone's a designer, and some do it for a living. What we need to do now is actually bring the community together with the professional. And we need also to embed design across the university curriculum. So that's why I created a lab here at Lancaster University called Imagination Lancaster. To use design in a research environment to lead thinking, but to bring in other disciplines. And I believe that actually everybody in the university should do a course in design. So I told you, if you cut me in half designs there, I implore you to take on design thinking and help us create radical solutions for cities of the future. Thank you very much.